Welcome to this short video on business and asset open source investigations. So in this module, we'll be talking about the importance of having a methodology and applying the framework to entities, businesses. And we'll be actually going through some examples uh, for you. In a business investigation, one of the first things is again, answering the questions as they are posed here. So for example, what is the purpose of the investigation? One of the questions is really important to identify who may be behind the business. What assets do they own or control? Are they legitimate? Sometimes looking at their supply chain or relationships is important. And what risk does this business relationship possibly present? The first thing to do when getting an assignment like this is to conduct an entity analysis. This has four different unique aspects of understanding the actual business. However, there are two other really important pieces. First, it's important to understand the industry and the overarching context in which the business operates. Secondly, it's important to know the business itself, including who they are and what the identifiers are. We'll talk more about identifiers shortly. But here are the four main quadrants that you wanna think about. First are the people, second, the financials, third, the operations, and fourth, the supply chain. In some assignments, one or more of these may not actually apply. For example, if you're only trying to understand who is behind a business, then maybe everything else is not as important. Certainly it could be. There could be some, some indications that could lead you to additional information in some of these other contexts, but it's important to structure your investigation in a manner that kind of aligns with the general entity analysis. Next, you need to apply the framework. So this is the framework that I've put together. It's important to understand that you have to gather all case data that's currently known, right? Understanding what it is that you know, understanding then what you need to look for, where to look, what's missing, and then the results. Repeating and refining this framework is important. And it's really important because on the stand or in your final report, you need to really be certain and show that the methodology that you used is sustainable. Today, there are so many tools now available to talk about understanding the open source landscape. Here are a couple of the things that you may want to consider. Obviously, search engines and online directories, as well as the deep web and archived or cached pages. But there are so many more, right? And they're changing every single day. So it's hard to say specifically what you could use. Be creative. This is where it's important to really think through the methodology and be work through exactly what you are uh, trying to do and accomplish in your assignment. At a minimum, as we said in the first step of the framework, you need to have identifiers. You need to have very basic information to be able to start. A name, a business name, a person's name, the address or location, if they have a business entity or a license number, who are the owners, if they have a website or email, phones, even fax numbers, anything to be able to start the process, right? And again, we go through the framework, we start working through what we have, we pick up more, we refine, go back and forth. It's an iterative process. One of the most important things to consider is whether they are an actual entity or not. This could be really important. So it's important to think through what are the types of businesses that are available and whether or not this in entity qualifies. You have sole proprietors, you have limited liability companies, partnerships, professional corporations, nonprofits, the 
different types of corporations like S Corps, C Corps, uh, B Corps, and there's so many more. But it's really important to understand whether or not this entity is actually an entity legally. Now, that may be beyond the scope of your assignment, but it is important to think through and understand what evidence you can gather to show whether or not they are an actual operating entity. It's important to remember, as in the first quadrant of our entity analysis, the people and understanding who is associated with the business, who are the owners, the managers, employees, or contractors. Um, running a persona framework, right, that we talked about in module three is also really important. Job search sites such as LinkedIn or others can be really helpful. You also may want to think about whether somebody's posted their curriculum vitae or resume. Um, job search sites could also include things like Indeed or you know Hire Me Now or something like that, where the the entity is actually advertising for open positions. In the event that the business you're looking at actually does have a website, the full site exploitation is invaluable. It's really important, and, and we do this in class uh, in several different instances because it's really important, right? So the information that is on a website can be absolutely critical. So conducting a full site exploitation, looking at the domain, looking at links, whether they're incoming or outgoing, the ownership information, including the historical ownership information or contacts, persons associated with it, and all the other attributes that we talk about in this course are so important. We'll talk more in depth about who is and some of the other technical tools, but this is a good outline to start with, and this is what we want to do. So this is the NFL National Football League, who is. So this is important because I think it, it just sets the stage. So we look at the who is to, in order to determine who actually owns and controls this website. Now, in this case, one of the neat things that we see is that there is a registration entity called NFL Enterprises LLC. Now, there's no other contact information, but again, we can use the framework to then start looking at, say, state registration state corporation uh, records to find NFL Enterprises LLC. Now what's important is to understand who Mark Monitor is. Mark Monitor is one of the leading companies that really does a lot of these uh, different things as you see on the screen there, domain management, brand protection, anti-counterfeiting, anti-piracy, uh, etc. So they really are the ones that are kind of doing the day-to-day -day things uh, in order to make sure that this is all working correctly. And they're really trying to protect the brand from issues and takeovers and, and, and all the bad things that can happen with these. But again, this is just one example. Obviously, there's a lot to go in and, and look at, but this is where it's important to really understand what the who is actually shows and where you can go. In June of 2008, the Department of the Treasury designated a Kuwaiti-based entity called the Revival of Islamic Heritage Society for providing financial and material support to Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda affiliates. Now, when they were added here to the tr uh, Treasury's uh, specially designated nationals list, uh, there were some indications that there were materials or, or identifiers uh, that were available, right? So using that, I then went to who is and found that there was a domain called alt, alturaf.org. And I think it's important here to be able to identify that even though no website actually existed, there was a domain. And the domain was being uh, run by who, who is, excuse me, Network Solutions, 
uh, provided the registrar URL. It was created in 1999. So we have a pretty substantial history with this, with this domain. Obviously, the registrant information is Revival of Islamic Heritage Society. It's interesting that Revival of Islamic is all one word, no spaces. Here we have, again, we show that it's in Kuwait, so we have some confidence there that it's correct. And then there's no contact information. So what do we do now? Again, let's use the framework to be able to start pulling these different pieces um, apart so that we can look at the full extent of this domain. So one of the first places you want to go, obviously, is the Wayback Machine. InternetArchive.org has a excellent history of many of these sites. It does, it has changed. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But again, it gives you a good sense of, of generally where things are. So I plug it in and here it comes. It comes back as saved 178 times between October 2nd, 2000 and May 29th, 2008. If you remember, they were designated in June of 2008, so that's pretty impressive. Here we have, again, going back to that, we saw that 1999 date and uh, 2000 uh, being the first capture, so we have, again, more confidence uh, that we are on the right path. So let's keep going and, and see what else we can find from the Wayback Machine. In archive.org, we see the Wayback Machine's capture of this website. This is the May 11, 2008 capture, which was the date right before the designation. Now, when it comes up, it's really hard to identify exactly what it is. All of the images are gone. I don't read Arabic, so I can't really see what those links go to. There are two things that you could potentially use. One is a Google Translate to help. The other is interesting. So when you start hovering over each of these images, it actually brings up the URL. And if you understand the fact that most of these web architects are using English as the URL, you can understand. So the first one, globe underscore ch, could indicate global charities. And that's exactly what they are. They, they are a charity purported. The second one you see is fatwa, which was, of course, a religious edict uh, often used as the guise or under the guise of uh, some form of religious authority to uh, commit jihad against the West. The third one, which is most interesting to me, is that there's a mail server, or what appears to be a mail server, mail.alrugertoth.org there. Again, just using these simple things is a way to start thinking about how to capture and exploit this website. In December of 2010, the U.S. Department of the Treasury targeted a financial network run by Hezbollah and designated Hezbollah fundraisers Ali and Hussein Tajuddin for providing support to that terrorist organization. They are brothers and business partners of a man named Kasim Tajuddin, who is an important financial contributor to Hezbollah, who had already been designated in 2009, also by the Treasury Department. The actions also targeted a network of businesses that were owned or controlled by these brothers, operating in a variety of countries, both in the Middle East as well as Africa, and even including the Virgin, British Virgin Islands. This screenshot is actually part of the designated uh, designation entity material that's available on the Treasury Department's website. So what's interesting here, and, and what I really focus on, is two things, the emails and the websites, right? So I see Tajco-Limited.com, Tajco Gambia, uh, Golf Rate Grupo at Ebonet.net, 
Um, all of these things provide great leads, right? So we're going to actually go through some of these. And again, there's so many different avenues to explore. Uh, and using the framework, going step by step for each of these, really building a better picture of what exactly is out there. So let's drill down and look at the who is portion for Tajco-Limited.com. So here we have not a lot of information, but we do know some things. First of all, the registrar is in China, probably Alibaba Cloud Computing Beijing. We have the domain abuse email. We have the registrar abuse contact phone number. I don't know enough about the Chinese phone system to really uh, get any sense of it. Uh, but now you actually can go to a cached version of the page, and here's where you get some really good information. So you get a summary, and you get some really good pictures. Again, it's all part of a larger systematic use of the framework and going back and forth and really understanding exactly what you have, what you're dealing with, and more importantly, where to go next. So if we look at tajcogambia.com, we put it in the Wayback Machine, and here we come up with a website. Now we're able to use that to go into the Who Is and see that it's registered to GoDaddy, so we have an opportunity to uh, use US legal process here. Some other interesting pieces here. Now there is a registrant organization. It's Domain Privacy Guard, Sociedad, Anonymia Limited, and it's in Panama. So we are going to get a, a di have some difficulty potentially getting um, the Panamanians to cooperate. But again, this is one more lead, right? So we, we have the opportunity to really put together a more fulsome understanding of what is all involved in, in this website. So let's look at golfrate.com. So here we see that the registrar is Two Cows, which is uh, a Canadian-based company, and looks like the name server is actually a UK-based name server, so there may be some opportunities there. But when we put it into the capture for um, the Wayback Machine, we actually find a new company, an entity, Golfrate Holdings Limited, in the Isle of Man. Once again, what a great opportunity. So now we have a, uh, a new set of information to start looking at. Circular Road, Douglas, the telephone number. Now again, it's probably gonna come back to a corporation services company. But again, we have now another option, another angle to start investigating. So over the course of this video, we've really talked about and shown examples of the importance of using the framework and the methodology and talking through the four different quadrants of the entity analysis to really identify those key elements of a business investigation. Here, there are many more and, and things to look at. It doesn't matter exactly what your assignment is. What it matters is, is that you understand and can apply the framework, the entity analysis, and understand the tools available in order to be most successful. Asset investigations are just as complicated as business investigations. Again, each of these topics could be its own full-fledged course, but I think it's important to understand that assets are often connected to businesses and certainly are connected to people. So in this case, again, applying the framework and looking at it from a holistic perspective is important. So whether it's real estate, 
boats or vessels, unclaimed funds, company information, copyrights, cryptocurrency, online markets, aircraft, anything like that. These are all assets that people find valuable. And so again, applying the framework, going through the process and really understanding what you are looking for is, is critical. So I hope this video has been helpful and interesting and I look forward to any comments on the discussion board. Thanks.